The other thing that you need to know about gradient descent is, okay, if I've got my partial derivatives with respect to my parameters, how do I actually minimize my loss function? And as was the case with logistic regression, the loss function, you can't just directly go to the minimum that you want to jump at. And so we're going to use an approach called gradient descent. Again, there's a gradient descent video, which I would link to in the comments. So the basic idea of gradient descent is I want to find the lowest point of J or a very good low point. So I want to jump here, but I can't do that analytically just directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, guess an initial W. So maybe we guess W is there. That's our guess for W. And then we're going to update it. So we're going to assign a new W which is eta times the derivative of the loss at that specific point. Eta is called the learning rate. Okay, so in this specific case, if we're at this W, then we can calculate the derivative, which would be a line like that. That has a negative slope. This is negative, which means we will move W upwards and then maybe we move here, okay? Now we again calculate the slope and maybe it looks like this. It's still negative, not as much as before. Um, and we take negative, negative, the learning rate is positive, so we take another positive step. And in this way, the idea is to basically go down and down and down the hill as you go as you're updating your W repeatedly. If we started here, for instance, then um, the derivative would have gone like this, which is positive. So we have a positive number, some positive number here, minus, so we would have moved our W in that direction. Now this example is all for, um, for the case where you have a scalar loss with a scalar W. Um, but since you now know about vector and matrix derivatives, if you have a big neural network with many parameters, you can stick all of them together and then um, you basically can update all of them in um, using basically like the stacks of all the little partial derivatives. So as a reminder, this would be, if we stack all our parameters as a vector, then this would be a vector of all those partial derivatives and we can update it all in one go um, like this. And that's the basics of gradient descent. I should maybe say one thing here just to make this very concrete. Um, because here, this, I mean, j is a function of w, so where's the concrete numbers here? So sometimes I like writing it more explicitly. So we start at a specific case of w, which is like a concrete vector. You can output it in Python, right? So w old. So that's maybe, that's maybe our w old there. Uh, okay, that's not a vector, but you get the point. W old, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the learning rate times the partial derivatives. But remember, this thing is a function. So at which point do I evaluate that function? I evaluate it at this point. I want to get that um, partial derivative. So I evaluate this. I evaluate that at this point, W is equal to W old, okay? And then, so this is a vector print it out in Python. This is another vector with a concrete specific value. And then I basically assign a W new to this updated value. And on our little picture here, then W new would basically sit maybe somewhere there. Okay, so that was just to be very specific about what happens in gradient descent. You can watch the other video for more details on where this can go right and wrong. And there are more advanced versions of this, but I want you to understand the basic principle.